He's hit as he throws. It's tipped. It is caught. It is intercepted. Oh, Troy flags. Hill at the 20 down the left sideline. Stumbling to pay dirt. A pick six to end the half. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Coach Speak presented by Samsung QLED. I am joined by the coach of your Los Angeles Rams, Mr. Sean McVay. Coach, playoff week, how are we feeling? Feeling good. Ready to uh, ready to get the rest of the game plan in. It's a great op for us, but feeling good. A little tired right now, a little tired. No time to sleep, my friend. And uh, you've already been asked this a thousand times. When this is viewed by everybody, maybe we have a better clue, but we'll ask you straight up. What's the latest on the quarterback position? Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see where we're at. Um, it was good to be able to get both those guys out there today. Jared did a nice job. I know he's attacking his rehab the right way. John did a good job last week, and so I think the positive for us is feel good about um, you know both of those guys, and uh, you know we'll see how Jared progresses throughout the week because you know he's our starting quarterback, but he is coming off thumb, thumb surgery as well. Let's talk about John, uh, the Wolford, and as we were calling him on our morning show, the Wolf of Ball Street. He had an amazing debut. Played great. Played more than competent. In fact. Showed a lot when he came back from that interception on that first career pass. What did you see from Wolford in that Week 17 game? And how did the team respond to the way he responded and got off the mat after an early turnover? Yeah, I, I thought he did a great job. You know, he said he wanted to be able to do that on the first pass so that he could show his resilience. I said, yeah. that would have been a lot easier for my nerves if you just, you know, told me you have resilience instead of having to show me that way. But I thought he settled in really nice. Um, would have loved to have seen us punch in a couple of those red zone opportunities where we get down in there, we have some penalties, had to settle for a field goal, and then we get a first and goal from the two and we fumble it away. Otherwise, you think, you know, you feel like it's a really good day offensively with him leading the charge, but I thought he was the bright spot offensively. Thought he did a great job seeing the field. He clearly made plays with his legs. I thought the third down and long play where he scrambled, I thought that really jump-started his day after, you know, it was a it was a tougher start, if you will, just with the expectations we have where we just a little off and had the turnover, but he did a great job. I thought uh, I was really impressed with his game day demeanor and it was uh, I don't think you I don't think you were surprised, but uh, it was good to be able to apply tangible evidence to what we thought he could do. Yeah, and and you get the win and everyone is takes a sigh of relief and now has to turn the page to, to the playoffs itself. But as the regular season comes to an end, we could talk about Walford and Goff and the offense. The defense finished number one ranked in the league, both in scoring and total defense. Just give us a little state of the union on what that unit is to the Los Angeles Rams and how we can look at them as we head towards the playoffs. season. Awesome. It's the strength of our team. They've been the most consistent part of the team week in and week out. They've steadily produced. I've been so pleased with them. I think, you know, Brandon has done a great job leading the way, working in unison with our defensive coaches. And then, you know, when you've got guys like Aaron Donald, you got guys like Jalen Ramsey, John Johnson, Leonard Floyd, Michael Brockers, that are really just such steady producers, performers, how locked in they were. Uh, I thought they built on the confidence that they established early on in the season. They just really kept stacking blocks. We challenged them to put an exclamation point on their work at the end of the regular season. And now it's even time to raise it up to another level against a great offense in the Seahawks. Uh, but, uh, but those guys have been outstanding. I've been really pleased with our defense and, and it's really enabled us to be able to change the approach on how we feel like uh, you know, our team wins and loses games. This you know, really ultimately tries to win games and uh, it's, been, uh, it's been outstanding. You get two key players back from the COVID-19 situation in Michael Brockers and Cooper Cup. What do those two mean to this team? both on offense, defense, and then overall as far as leadership goes. Yeah, it, it's really all of the above. You know, Cooper with, with Cooper and Michael both with their production, but their leadership, their presence, the confidence that they breed in the other 10 guys around them in the huddle. I also believe we're going to get Whitworth back, which is a huge boost to us just with his, you know, his presence, his production. And so um, that'll be a big boost to our football team if we're able to get those two off the COVID list and then Andrew uh, coming back off of IR. Seahawks week times three. These guys, again, we can scout them all we want, but what's it mean playing these guys in the middle of January in a playoff game, and how is this team ready to tackle that challenge? Yeah, we're excited. I mean, it seemed like we were just there yesterday. It's a great opportunity. Um, you know, we have a lot of respect for these guys, but make no mistake about it. You know, we're, we're going to prepare with the expectation to go up there and try to win a game. Uh, I'll miss the 12s in the atmosphere that that provides, but uh, we'll be cheering our ass off on the sideline. I love it. Coach, thank you. On behalf of Samsung QLED, another episode of Coach Speak. Go get him, Coach McVeigh.
Let's do it, man. Good to see you.